Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Varevsky, and I will be your host for today. We couldn't be more excited to be hosting events during, during Seeker Path Week in partnership with the Gore Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund. So the Downey Wenjack Fund is part of musician Gore Downey's legacy and embodies his commitment and that of both the Downey and Wenjack families to call community peoples of this land. So the goal is to continue the conversation that began with Chani Wenjack's residential school story and to support the reconciliation process through awareness, education, and action. So ever since Thursday, we've had classrooms from across Canada joining us to help us celebrate Indigenous scientists, artists, and leaders from across the country and work towards a day of events that we're really excited uh, to be kicking off today. Um, today we have Chris Ann Hessing. She's a documentary filmmaker based in Toronto. She's combined her love of travel and storytelling to produce award-winning short stories that have screened around the world. So her work reflects themes of identity and community and generally challenges common perceptions, especially relating to unrepresented or underrepresented groups and minorities. Her most recent film, Turning Tables, premiered at Hot Docs in 2018 and won the best documentary short at the 43rd uh, American Indian Film Festival. So Chrisanne, we're so excited to have you joining us today. We've got classrooms joining us from across Canada, uh, both on YouTube and here on camera with us, and we're excited to get to know you a little better. Thank you, Joe. It's uh, great to um, be here and have the opportunity to present to you all. Um, before I get started, I guess I'll just do the screen sharing thing right now. Um, and uh, let me just do that. Here we go. Okay, so. Can everyone see this okay? Looks good, we're full screen. Okay, excellent. So um, yeah, as, as uh, Joe mentioned, my name is Chrisanne. I'm a documentary filmmaker here in Toronto. And I'm so pleased to be able to talk about the latest short documentary that I directed, which is called Turning Tables. Um, so just off the top, I'm wondering if, um, how many of you that I can see here have already seen the film? Okay, great. So we've got, <laughs> excellent. So we've got one, I see some hands. We've got one class at least. So that's good. But um, uh, just due to some technical difficulties, we won't be watching the film again. Instead, I'll have a few short clips that I'll show you guys and a brand new music video from Classic Roots that we can show at the end. So um, just to get started, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about my work. Um, I have generally um, uh, love to uh, promote and share stories from community leaders, um, especially in the greater Toronto area, who have been doing amazing things um, at the intersection of uh, the arts and working with youth specifically. So my films have taken me to Ecuador and Spain, and I've made documentaries there, and I've worked with a lot of communities and charities um, here in Toronto. Um, but the thing that I'm here to talk to you guys about is Turning Tables. So Turning Tables, um, it's a short artist profile documentary about DJ Classic Roots. So his name is Joshua DePerry, but he's also known as Classic Roots. And he is a music producer, DJ and powwow dancer who's pioneering powwow techno. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you have heard of powwow techno, but it is this kind of hybrid genre, new musical genre that combines traditional indigenous sounds with modern electronica. And the result is a really banging party. It's, um, it's a very um, upbeat, catchy um, melody. And you know what, I'm just going to show you guys the trailer for those of you who haven't seen it. So let's go right to that. How do I feel when I put it on? It reminds me of uh, back when the native people were traveling in the bush and just visualizing how they were before the settlers came. How like techno or just techno in general is, is quite new to this community. I feel that's important. 
showing that we're still here. Okay. Um, I didn't lose anyone in that uh, in that video playing. I'm always nervous about that, but now we're all good. Now it played great. Perfect. So um, I can just talk a little bit more about the background of Turning Tables and how um, Josh and I met. Um, it was now about four years ago that we initially met, and I was working on another film where he was a one of the dancers, and I was on the crew. And um, basically we hit it off and he talked to me about the music he was working on. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. Like you're for sure gonna be famous one day and I wanna be there to capture it. So as we worked together, uh, we were making the film. Um, he decided that he was going to move to Berlin, Germany, which is the techno capital of the world. And he's like, I'm gonna bring my music and my dance there. And I thought, wow, that, is pretty <laughs> it's a, a pretty for it um and um i just kept thinking back about the very first time that i saw him perform and i thought you know what people are gonna love you so the first time that i saw him perform i didn't know that he was a powwow dancer um i knew that he was a dj a techno dj and that um he had these new beats and that he could break dance but when he came out on the stage in his full powwow regalia, there was a different energy in the room and everyone really loved to see the way he um, was so energetic in his movement and his dance. So I already knew I wanted to make a film about him, at least visually, but when I saw him with the kids in his community, that's when I knew this guy is something special because he was a role model to the kids in his community. And I'm pretty sure there's a class here that's from Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay is where Josh is from. Where's the Thunder Bay class? There we go, okay, <laughs> amazing. So I don't know if any of you guys know about Classic Roots, but he is from Thunder Bay and we filmed a bunch of the, um, a bunch of the movies there in Thunder Bay. Um, and this photo right here was actually taken um, during a visit to his hometown reservation of Long Lake 58 First Nation. And um, the children there were all part of the, the movie, the making of the movie, and they had a really great time. And I think something that we all just learned from this experience was that um, the power of a positive role model, especially when as a young person, like for me, when I was growing up, I didn't have very many options of people who looked like me or talked like me um, who were successful, let alone in the arts. So when we saw um, the, the young people around Josh who had just felt so inspired and felt that, you know, they can be anything they want to be too. We thought this is, this is our message. This is what we want to do. And I mean, look at that smile. This guy is such full of positive vibes and he's a super talented DJ and dancer as well. So we just had a very, very great time making the movie and also sharing with people the fact that this is a positive story of an indigenous person, someone who is resilient and who celebrates life and is thriving. So just th through the way that Josh lives his life, it's, it's um, you could say it's a beacon of hope. It's a very positive uh, message to anyone at any age that you can follow your dreams no matter where you come from. So we made the film and um, hopefully for those of you who watched it, you've seen it, you've seen, how, you've seen how it ends, no spoilers, but for those who um, haven't yet seen it, we will be sharing the link that will be available until tomorrow um, where you guys can watch it for free as part of Secret Path Week. Um, but the film was extremely successful, both in the classrooms and in the fe film festival world. So we have screened in over 20 film festivals around the world um, and Classic Roots and I have been traveling um, all over to where he would DJ and dance and we would show the film. Um, and so it's been 
a wild ride since the premiere to a year ago, over a year ago. And since then, we've actually created a new project. Um, so for those of you who had seen the film, you know that there's a scene in the, in the film where he um, is in the studio and he's jamming with his friends and they create a little track. So that song is called Start the Fire. And we ended up taking that track and making it into a full song and um, creating a music video for it that actually just released about a week ago. So it's very fresh. Um, and I wanna share that with you guys. And in this music video, it basically just documents um, our time on tour where we visited or revisited the communities that we worked with. So including some schools in Thunder Bay, but then also up North and um, having them watch the film and, and, and meet with Josh and, and have a, uh, a good time just dancing. So without further ado, I will share this music video with you guys, if that's okay. All right, here we go. our home this is where we're from we're from the north we're all here because we had a dream we all just continue to keep striving and to keep growing and to keep healing from anything that we're going through we've all had uh, traumas we've all had issues that we've had to get past and for us our tool to be able to grow and heal was music Don't let anybody ever put out your flame. Oh, no. 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 Oh,
Okay, so I hope that played okay for everyone. Did you guys like it? <laughs> That's amazing. Just before we um, go to some questions, I'd be happy to take questions from you guys. Uh, for all the teachers who might have not yet um, seen the film, uh, there is this link available here. Um, which will be only available until tomorrow. Um, and if you do decide to screen the film um, today or tomorrow morning, uh, I'd ask that you please contact uh, Leslie Sparks, who's our um, representative from Hot Docs, who has been facilitating having the film available through C Secret Path Week and just share with her the teacher, your, like your name, school name, location, as well as any information about the number of students that were able to watch the film. And last, um, I just want to say thank you again uh, for hearing me out and uh, hearing me talk about turning tables. You can follow us. We are on all social media platforms on Instagram at Facebook at Turning Tables Doc and Twitter as well. And we have a website, www.turningtablesdoc.com. And of course, if you love classic roots music, which who wouldn't after, after all that, uh, you could visit him at classic-roots.com and um, at Classic Roots on all platforms. And the, the music video, the song for Start the Fire, the remix is now available on Spotify and all platforms as well. So yeah, with that, I guess I'll stop screen sharing. And Perfect. Awesome, Chris. Anna, thanks so much for sharing. It's a really cool music video. Thank you. And the doc is great so i really hope that as well to the classroom streaming on youtube if you need to see that link again just let me know and i can share it with any classrooms who are interested and speaking of youtube i want to give a few shout outs we've got um a class in markham's uh canadian international law class hanging out with us today we've got um, a class in brockville ontario uh and then Believe it or not, we have one of our scientists who does events with us. He's watching all the way from the Mariana Islands in the Pacific Ocean. So wow. don't forget to send us in some questions and we will work some of those in. But I think we should meet some of our camera classrooms first and see how they're doing. Sure. So uh, let's see. Let's go. Let's start off in Thunder Bay. Let's go to Mr. Levine's class. Let me get their microphone turned on. There it is. How are we doing, Thunder Bay? Good. Good. <laughs> All right, we're ready for you. Yeah. If you have been, have you been to any pow powwows? If you have, how many powwows have you been to? Mm, yes, I've definitely been to some powwows. Um, and the very first powwow that I went to was in Thunder Bay. It was at the Lakehead University powwow, uh, which happens, I think, around March. Um, so I was there for the first time and that was the first time I went to Thunder Bay. Since then, um, I've been to powwows up in, in Josh's hometown res and recently the one that you saw in the music video that was in Marathon and that was organized by the um, Marathon High School students. So maybe I'd say under five, I definitely want to be going to more, but, but uh, yeah, I'd say it's about five powwows that I've been to. Yeah. All right, very cool. Thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna come back to Thunder Bay's way, mm -hmm. but first we're gonna go to Mrs. Evershed's group. They're hanging out with us in Mississauga, Ontario. So probably not too far from you, Chris Ann. Let me get their microphone turned on. How are we doing, Mississauga? Was it your first choice to be a, a video producer? Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Okay. Was it your first choice to be a video producer? Ah, oh, okay. My yeah, my first choice. Actually, when I was um very young, I wanted to be a musician. <laughs> um, so I guess it kind of works out that I ended up getting into film production so I could work with musicians. I, I did go to film school um, in 
so not too far. And um, yeah, I've just kind of stuck with film since then, but I do love working with musicians still. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a pretty awesome thing when you get to combine some passions, when you get to take that, that love for music and uh, make some really cool media around it. Definitely. All right. So uh, I've got a question coming in from YouTube that I'm going to put in right now. And this class is wondering about the process. So from the idea uh, for the film to the film being released, what was that kind of time frame like? Yeah, so um, it's it's funny. I usually ask, ask people to guess, but there's so many people here. So I'll just tell you, <laughs> it, it took about one whole year um, to come from the moment I had the idea I want to make this film to when we were finished the edit and giving it to our, our broadcaster one whole year for 15 minutes of a film. And that's actually a very quick turnaround for documentaries, especially they can take years and years and years. And a lot of that can be sometimes just finding the funding to, to be able to hire your crew and, and, and um, be able to fly to the destinations that you need to film at and all the camera equipment. So for us, it was, uh, we're pretty lucky to have been able to um, develop in six months. And then we only shot the film in five days. All the stuff that you saw in the film was just over five days. They were jam packed days, but very, very quick. And then, you know, the editing was about four months. Um, and yeah, like by the end of it, it was, it was one whole year. All right, very cool. Keep those questions coming in from the online groups. Let's head over to, let's see. Uh, Miss Smith and Mr. Cleland have some students hanging out there in Mississauga as well, grade sevens. It's a lot of students, so I bet they're pretty loud. Let's find out. How are we doing grade seven? Yep. What inspired you to create this documentary? What inspired you to create this documentary and who motivated you? Um, yes, very, very good question. Um, so I'd say that it kind of started and ends with Josh with Classic Roots, because like I, I mentioned earlier, the first time that I saw him perform. And um, so you guys are the Mississauga students, right? Yeah, okay. So Classic Roots is in the GTA. You guys should go check him out at some point. He does concerts all over all over the, um, the GTA. And uh, I'd say that, you know, in making the film, that's only a fraction of what his energy is really like in person. And he's actually got, I don't know if you guys noticed, new regalia since the film that, uh, and regalia is the um, powwow dancing outfit that he wears. And so, um, he's definitely upgraded in that. So you can see him there. But in terms of what motivated me, I'd say it was a mix between Josh himself. You know, he was very much like, we both need to make this film. We need to get this message out there. But also um, what motivated me was that at the time I wasn't seeing a lot of films out there that showcased um, people of color or black indigenous people of color in a positive way. And so I thought we need to show that there are these people, these everyday heroes, you know, um, just among us doing these amazing things. And so that's kind of what I kept in mind all those times, that whole year that we were making the film. And, you know, I'm very happy that since then we've had a lot of mainstream films like Black Panther and Aladdin and all these uh, films with like diverse casts and diverse stories being shown on such a big level. So. I'm very happy that it's just kind of gotten better since then. All right, very cool. We're coming back your way, Mississauga. Uh, but first we have to take a little trip uh, south of the border. We have Mrs. Padbury's class hanging out with us in grade sixes in Kansas City, Missouri. Let me get their microphone turned on. There it is. How are we doing, boys and girls? Hi. All right. Um, what are some obstacles you had to overcome and, and how did you overcome them? Um, okay, so I can, I can share one, which is 
a really fun little story. So um, the whole time we were filming, I told Josh, I was like, we need to get, um, uh, we need to film you at a concert with your mentor who's DJ Shub. I don't know if anyone knows who a, a Tribe Called Red is, but DJ Shub is one of the members from there. And Josh was touring with him at the time. And, you know, we, we just, they weren't having shows in Toronto and I needed it to be there to be able to film them. So at the very last minute, he, Josh at this point was about to go to Berlin the next week. And once he left, you know, we wouldn't have been able to film with him anymore. So just out of thin air, a gig came up and he said, I'm doing this show. It's a, a college frosh week party. Uh, and it's going to be in Toronto. Do you want to come to it? And I said, okay. And it's like a sold out show. We get there, we film it. And we were really blown away. And you can see it, it's, it made the cut in the film of that um, scene where he's uh, dancing on stage with to a packed audience. And what I didn't know is that that was actually a concert for Post Malone. I don't know if, if you guys know who Post Malone is, but yes, it was a Post Malone concert. And I'm very grateful actually that I didn't know who he was at the time because I had no problem kicking him out of his dressing room and saying, we need to film in here. Can you please let us film? And, and he was like, yeah, no problem, no problem. And so we filmed and it ended up being a crazy, like super energetic show that Josh um, opened for for post, post Malone, so uh, you'll see all the the people in the audience that are actually probably really big Post Malone fans as well. But yeah, that was just a, a fun little story of how you know we weren't sure if this uh, we would get the shoot, and then it ended up coming through for us on like such an amazing big scale. All right, very cool. So before we swing back through our classrooms, I've got another YouTube question from. Um, our high school class, and they're wondering about the supporting of your production. Uh, is it sponsors? Do you get government grants? How do you find support uh, to make a documentary like this one? Okay, now here I'm going to try to ask um, the classes that we're with a question. Um, does anyone want to throw out a number of how much money this film cost to make? All right, I'm going to put a couple of microphones on. We'll take some guesses. Let's start with Mrs. Evershed's group. How much money do you think the film cost? <laughs> Go ahead and Did shout it out. Just shout it out. Um, <laughs> $2,000? $2,000? $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $
we released a soundtrack. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. There is a Turning Tables official soundtrack uh, available on all platforms. Um, if you loved it, and including the very first version of Start the Fire. So it's um, the, the music video that I showed you is the remix, which has lyrics and everything like that. But the first one is just um, taken from, from the film. So you guys can check that out on all platforms when you get a chance. All right, very cool. Well, I see someone waiting super patiently in Thunder Bay. So I'm gonna turn the microphone on for her. Here we go, you're on. What bands are you like? What bands are you in? Oh, so interesting question. I'm actually not indigenous. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I was born in Bombay, so I'm Indian and I'm an immigrant. But um, Josh is uh, half Blackfoot and half Ojibwe. And so, yeah, so uh, we were dealing a lot with the in the Shinabe community, and he is a band member of Long Lake 58. Thank you. All right, Thank awesome you. question. Uh, let's go to Mrs. Evershed's group, see if they have another one for us. David, put your, put your hands down, David, I need this question. Okay. Right up here and speak nice um, and loudly. What are you doing? What is Josh doing now? Okay, very, very good question. I love to answer this one because he's doing so many exciting things. It's it's difficult to keep up with him these days. So um, the film ends off. Oh, actually, you know, I won't say because there's some people who've not seen the film yet. But his travels have uh, since taken him all over the world. You know, he's uh, he was in Japan earlier this year on a tour in Japan and also in Paris doing a show there. And um, him and I were just in Colorado. He's uh, DJed at techno festivals in Detroit and um, Amsterdam. And uh, he was also in South America this year. So he is touring a lot and also um, still very much touring in First Nations communities through, um, uh, it's called the Reach for Life Tour, which uh, is a collective of these amazing indigenous uh, mentors and musicians who go um, uh, to different reservations across Ontario to hold concerts and um, motivational speaking and all sorts of workshops with the youth. And that's called the Reach for Life Tour, if anyone's interested in checking that out. All right, very cool. Uh, Mrs. Padbury's class, let me turn your microphone on again. Anybody have any questions? Charlie, say something. Charlie. That's okay, I can come back if you guys want me to come back. Charlie, Charlie. 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 We'll, we'll think of a question and come back to us. Okay, no pressure. Uh, back to our big group in Mississauga. Let me turn your microphone back on, Mr. Cleland's group. Your microphone is on. What skills do you need to be a filmmaker? Mm, very good question. Um, so I'd say, um, at, at least for documentary film, what's amazing about that, um, that side of the film industry is that I know a lot of very uh, talented and successful filmmakers who never studied film. You know, they came from very different backgrounds. I think what it comes down to is um, an openness to um, uh, deal with people without judging them and being open to hearing people's stories, um, their perspectives, and uh, to listen without judgment, I think is a big part of it. Um, and then also to, um, I'd say it's a passion-oriented kind of uh, uh, job. So you have to really care about, about the story you wanna tell and the message that you want to leave, and you know what? If you, in my in my opinion, if or in my experience rather, if you are in something for the right reasons with good intentions, things doors will just open for you. So it's kind of a mix of different things, but a lot of it does come down to how you can interact with people, and um, um, yeah, just be a good listener. I'd say. All right, we'll check in with our Missouri classroom and see if they have that question ready, but that no question. pressure, we can move on if we're still thinking. <laughs> you guys are putting a lot of pressure on Charlie. 
Charlie. Poor Charlie. Poor Charlie. What, 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 what's the best part about living in Toronto? Oh, well, I would say that it is, there's so much going on all the time. I think in terms of film festivals and stuff like that, I think there's a film festival that happens every single week of the year, year round. So there's always something. Um, Toronto also hosts, um, I think Canada's only documentary, only cinema. So there's a place to go and that's the hot doc explore or Ted Rogers hot doc cinema. And I mean, yeah, there's just so many amazing opportunities. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can catch classic roots perform at the AGO or at the ROM. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. All right, very cool. Well, Kirsten, I think we might be able to sneak in another question and I see someone waiting so patiently in Thunder Bay that I can't ignore them. So let me turn that mic on. What is your favorite part of your job and why? Hmm. My favorite part of the job. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of different times that I love the job. Um, and there is such a long process too, right? There's the, the time that you have where you're thinking about the idea and then the time where you're actually filming it and working with the crew and then you're editing it. And that's a whole other um, way of doing the storytelling. And then there's the, the time that you have when you're releasing it and sharing the film with audiences. So I'd have to say, I can't really pick one moment um, because they're all, every part of the process is both exhilarating and terrifying at the same time. So it balances out quite, quite nicely. And um, I mean, yeah, I'll ha I've had very good experiences across the board. So yeah, I'd say, and it's a good thing to probably like the process as a whole rather than only at one point. So, yeah. All right. Thank you I for the question. One more, we'll go back to Ms. Smith and Mr. Cleland's group. Your microphone's on, I see someone wait. What do you want people to take away from this film? Mm, very good question. Okay, so um, what would I want people to take away from this film? Uh, I mean, other than the fact that they can know that uh, Pow Wow Techno exists and it's really good music, um, I guess I'd want um, people to take away just a new, fresh perspective on stories about Indigenous people, you know, and the fact that um, there are so many uh, beautiful artists in the Indigenous community that are um, such a, a, a beacon of hope and, and such a light for all of us. We can learn so much more from just the, the work that they do, from uh, the way they live their lives, and for us to just pay a bit more attention to um, all the positive things that are happening around us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, Chris Ann, time always flies when we do these events. Um, obviously, I want to say a huge shout out to our classrooms, both on camera uh, and on YouTube. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and your awesome, well thought out questions. The Secret Path Week is coming to a close quickly. But we do have a really cool event at two o'clock uh, Eastern with Rena Priest. She's a National Geographic Explorer. And we do have a camera spot or two left. So if any classrooms who are tuning in on YouTube or on camera want to join, just shoot me an email. But uh, Chrisanne, I have to go back and say thank you so much. Um, Josh's story is awesome. The film is incredible. Um, I hope the classrooms get to tune in to it today. And don't forget to send that information so they know uh, which classroom saw it. But again, Chrisanne, thanks so much. And we look forward to seeing what you're cooking up next. I'm wondering if just before we go, I can get a little video of all the classes that are here live, just shooting a wave and we'll, we'll post it to our, to our social media. Yeah, okay, great, here we go. Sure. All right, what I'll do is I'll turn the microphone on and let's get crazy. So here we go. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much for hanging out today. That was tons of fun. Chrisanne, thanks for sharing 
uh, the doc with us as well as a little bit of the story behind it. And uh, yeah, but I hope everybody has a great day and we'll talk to everybody soon, hopefully. Thanks so much, Chris Ann. Thank you.